This camera shoots 4K. And so does this one. And so does this one. So what's the difference? Let's break all cameras into four tiers. This is a huge generalization, I know, but it works for what we're trying to do here. The first tier I'll call portable consumer, and these include smartphones, GoPros, and consumer photo and video cameras. On the second tier are DSLRs and mirrorless still photo cameras. Camcorders are on the third tier, and on the top tier are the cinema rigs. It's a huge spectrum of cameras that varies hugely in price, but what separates a $500 camera from a $50,000 one? Three main categories of features, sensor size, image quality, and camera functionality. We'll cover each of these features in its own episode, and in this episode, we'll start with sensors. Portable consumer cameras have tiny sensors. There's a variation in the size, but they're all pretty small. And generally, smaller sensors have noisier footage and less control over depth of field. The next popular size up is the Micro Four Thirds sensor. That'll give you a little more control over depth of field. Then you have sensors that are in the super 35 millimeter range. This includes crop frame cameras or APS-C sensors. These sensors are generally the same size as the movie industry standard for cinema film. And finally, there's full frame sensors. I've grayed out the full frame sensors and consumer cameras because unlike top tier cinema rigs, these cameras have to cheat to shoot video on such a large sensor. That translates to a loss in quality. So most full frame cameras give you the option to shoot in super 35 mode instead. And that's where I normally keep mine set. What size sensor is right for you? It all depends on what control you want over your depth of field. Shallow depth of field looks beautiful. It looks professional, but it can also be a problem depending on what you're shooting. One example is a corporate presentation, where you'll need to keep the subject in focus and probably even the visual aids behind them as well. If you point an iPhone at it, you'll see everything clearly. But if you're shooting on a big sensor, you'll need more light to close down the aperture enough to get that depth of field. For these, small sensors might be the better choice. Without getting too technical on this, the depth of field at any given aperture will be shallower the bigger the sensor. Here's me on a Super 35 sensor. This is me on an iPhone. So why? To find out, you need to know two things. First, the longer the focal length of a lens, the shallower the depth of field, and more compressed the background. Here's a shot with a full frame sensor and a 24 millimeter lens. The same lens can be a wide on one camera or a telephoto on another, depending on the size of the sensor. This is what it would look like on a Super 35 camera. Here's a Micro Four Thirds. And finally, here's how much a small consumer sensor would cover. So the wider the lens, the less control over depth of field, as you know, the smaller the sensor, the wider the lens you need to capture the same scene. To illustrate this, let's look at kit lenses. These are basic budget zoom lenses that come with some consumer cameras. Kit lenses all give you the same standard range from the same exact kind of wide to the same exact kind of zoom. On a full frame camera, the kit lens is a 24 to 70. On crop sensor cameras, it's an 18 to 55. On micro four thirds, it's a 14 to 42. Then you get to an iPhone with a four millimeter lens, definitely not cinematic. Also, bear in mind that a lot of Super 35 camcorders and cinema cameras that shoot 4K have an option to crop into the sensor when you're shooting in HD. It's a little cheat that's perfect for corporate presentations and it's kind of like having two cameras in one. That's it for sensors. Make sure to watch the next episode where we'll decode the technical jargon around image quality. Thanks for watching.